Welcome back and thank you for joining me again. I remain your Health Matters presenter and Osamu Diame Irure. Today I will be talking about atherosclerosis as a consequence of this lipidemia. In my last presentation, I mentioned that cardiovascular issues could be detected in a well visit. I choose to talk about this topic today because this lipidemia is a quiet condition that could potentially result in debilitating situation. It is also the leading cause of cardiovascular disease. And cardiovascular disease, as I research from CDC, is the fifth cause of mortality and morbidity in my beloved country, Nigeria. So once again, welcome, relax, and be ready to learn. Before we go further, I would like to define arteries and plaques. Arteries are blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to the body. And plaque is a sticky substance made of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substances in the blood. Therefore, atherosclerosis is a condition in which plaque builds up inside those arteries, causing narrowing of the blood vessels and impairing blood flow, thereby resulting in ischemia or death of an organ. What are the signs and symptoms of atherosclerosis? Patients with atherosclerosis without any underlying conditions are mostly asymptomatic. That means they don't show any sign of being ill until the plaque occlusion exceeds 70 to 80% of the luminal diameter. Now that we know that high lipid level can cause plaque formation, how do we check? To detect high blood lipid or dyslipidemia, a blood test called lipid profile is done. This test measures the amount of various forms of fat and cholesterol in the body. Your doctor may have to perform physical examination, including ankle brachial index, and non-invasive vascular testing, including imaging, in order to detect arterial diseases. This test can be done by your primary care provider if you follow up with them regularly. What are the consequences of atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis can lead to turbulence and slowing of blood flow in the region of the plaque, resulting in thrombosis, as I will show in my diagrams later on. If you do look at this diagram that I have right here, the normal artery is right there. You can see blood flowing through the normal artery. It's patent, it's open. And the one below it shows narrowing of the artery. Atherosclerosis can lead to coronary artery disease, as shown in this diagram as well. What that means is because of the plaque buildup in that artery, and then there is a clot that forms because the blood is coming down slowly, it begins to gather, it begins to accumulate in that area, and then there's um, a clot. If that clot is there, it occludes blood flow to the heart, as you can see, and that can cause damage to that area of the heart. It can also lead to car carotid artery disease. What that means, if that plaque is gathered in the artery going to the brain, what happens is there is reduced blood supply, as you can see from this diagram, and what happens is that part of the brain becomes ischemic. It can also lead to peripheral artery disease. And what that means is it affects the lower extremity, the legs. Atherosclerosis, brothers and sisters, is the reason most people have stroke or heart attack. What can be done to reduce the occurrence of plaque buildup? Plaque buildup can be prevented by regular exercise and watching the type of food we eat. What food can cause plaque buildup? It includes full fat margarine, baked goods, saturated fatty acid from food like red meat and our popular Nigeria red palm oil. We Nigerians 
at least cook with red palm oil every day. Deep fried foods. We love our fried foods, our dodo, our fried yam. And our popular oil meat that we get from street vendors, our mama put. Well, I am not saying don't eat fat, but what I want you to know is the type of fat you consume is more important than the amount of the total fat. For example, trans fat contribute to coronary artery disease. Why polyunsaturated fatty acid probably reduce coronary artery disease. Therefore, trans fatty acid consumption should be kept as low as possible. Now that we know the problematic food, what are the healthy foods? As we know, fruits, nuts, seeds, avocado, and fish are healthy food. Also, red yeast rice is healthy due to the presence of monocolins that have the ability to reduce cholesterol. Whole grain and high fiber, these are also very good food. Let me mention here that when fat is needed to cook, use plant oil, especially olive oil, corn oil, because they contain polyunsaturated fatty acid. This is recommended by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. At this time, I will open up for questions. If there's anyone who wants to ask questions, please call in and we'll be able to take your question. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. Hello. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Yeah, I am Mrs. Elizabeth Abon. I'm calling you from Nigeria, Benin City, Nigeria. Oh, welcome, Mrs. Elizabeth. How can I help you? Yeah, I really want to ask some, some questions I, I, am, I want to know. You talked about the lipid profile. When should I start checking my lipid profile? Oh, that's a beautiful question. The question is, for those of you who may not be able to hear very well, she said, when should she start checking her lipid profile? That was a call from Miss Elizabeth Igbo. She's still on the line. Well, screening should generally start at age 35 for men with no cardiovascular risk. And then 20 to 35 years for people that have risk for cardiovascular disease, men, women. Okay. Okay. Well, like I said in my previous presentation, regular checkup is done yearly, but if you have any other condition, your doctor may want to see you sooner than one year. But basically, every year is what is recommended for well visit or physical examination. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but Well, thank you for that question, Mrs. Abon. Uh, Mrs. Abon is asking, how will she know if her lipid is high? This is a very important question, and I would like you all to know today, there is no way to tell if your lipid is high or your cholesterol is high. It is very asymptomatic. What that means is, unless you have other conditions going on, you may not even know. You can tell unless you do the test, the lipid profile test. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Well, thank you so much. I hope to call in some other time. It was my pleasure. Thank you so thank much, you. Mrs. Igbo, and thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. So much viewers we are out of time but let us remember that in all of these discussions we're having the most important of it all is to follow up with your primary care physician 
Do not wait to be sick before you do so. Prevention is better and easier than cure. This presentation was once again brought to you by my humble self, and Osamu Diame Irure. And as I always say, I am not only a presenter, I am also a provider and the administrator of Overboard Healthcare LLC. Please contact me by calling 781-205-4819. If you or any member of your family is in need of home ed aid services or skilled nursing services here in Massachusetts. If you have any questions you want me to address in my next presentation, please email me overboardheadcarellc at gmail.com. Again, if you live in Benin City and you want to start regular checkup with a doctor, please go to Fountain of Life Specialist Hospital, number 3B Ogbe Sasa Street of Sapler Road, Benin City. Finally, if you live in Massachusetts and you are looking for that African restaurant where good food is made and the cooks care about your health, please visit Tambo's Kitchen at 490 West Main Street, Avon, Massachusetts. Thank you and see you next time.